So the Toronto District, uh, sorry. So the Toronto Catholic District School Board did two really interesting things recently that I don't know if enough people are talking about. The first is that the Toronto Dis Catholic District School Board disbands its race relations committee in a vote done back in February 15th, which trustee Maria Rizzo says is a relic of the past and made redundant by other ethnic advisory committees and a new equity action plan approved by 2023. Uh, Maria Rizzo goes on to say that she hasn't seen any growth, any progress, or any goals achieved from the Race Relations Committee. This is really interesting. Uh, in August 2020, there was a motion brought forward to reestablish the committee. Um, Rizzo says the committee failed to bring any recommendations to the board. They would often discuss matters at length, but not come up with tangible action items to bring forward. She added it was frustrating to uh, went sorry. She added it was a frustrating feeling when valuable time was spent explaining board procedures to those who weren't familiar. Very interesting here, um, because I wonder if this harkens back to. What many of us are concerned when it comes to these race relations committees, whether uh, in our places of work or places uh, where we volunteer, etc. I've always wondered about the efficacy of uh, the anti-racism committees. Many times they provide, um, you know, books, media, podcasts for, for more people to learn. The question I have is a couple. One, I think the impetus of race relations committee is to spread awareness about the discrimination, harassment, and racism that specific groups have. Um, and I think that generally people are open to understanding a lot of that. I don't think though, I do think, sorry, in more recent times, a lot of these committees have taken a much more, I wouldn't say militant, but a much more dogmatic approach in saying that we're going to mandate these learnings. We're going to mandate these committees. We're going to mandate your attendance to these committees. Uh, and I think that has a lot to do with what's happening in the global, global world, the uh, is issues of the world. But there's a cause and effect relationship, a, a, a knee-jerk reaction when that type of thing is mandated. So I think generally people are open to learning. But once you start mandating it, I think you get a very different event visceral reaction from people. And the reason why is because some may argue, you know, why this group, not that group? Why am I learning about this? It's very depressing. I don't want to hear about this because I've got my own issues. You get a very much why them, not me. And it paints uh, members of groups in a very negative light, again, in my opinion. And so keeping these op open and optional might be kind of the way they, they sustain themselves. But that kind of dogmatic approach has led a lot of people to ask and ponder why these committees exist and for what reason. And, and many organizations have struggled uh, with anti-racism. So it's very interesting that the Toronto Catholic District School Board is disbanding its race relations committee because, again, they're not too sure what exactly the committee is doing. Now, this is off uh, one trustee's experience. But something that I'm sure is a shared experience by many of us. The second thing that the Toronto Catholic District School Board did is there's actually something that's being put forward by one of its trustees about mandating the flying of, the, of a pro-life flag during the month of May. Check this out. All Toronto Catholic schools might be flying pro-life flags next month if a motion is passed. This comes after TCDSB trustee Mike Del Grande put forward a motion asking all staff and students to support the annual National March for Life by flying a pro-life flag every day in May and by having everyone participate in the upcoming anti-abortion march in Ottawa. If the motion is passed, all students and staff will be required to attend the anti-abortion march on May 9th and those who cannot go will be mandated to learn a pro-life curriculum during normal school hours on 
on the same day. The National March mm. for Life wow. is an annual protest that takes place on Parliament Hill and is organized by the Campaign Life Coalition. Del Grande made headlines back in 2019 when he made inappropriate comments writing to us LGBTQ plus rights, connecting it to bestiality, pedophilia, and cannibalism. Wow. The motion will be debated by the board at its next meeting on April 23rd. For more on the story, head to nowtoronto.com. So very interesting there about um, some of the, oh, sorry about that. The, uh, some of the, so very interesting to see there what some of the uh, aspects of that bill will include. So similar to the Race Relations Committee, the, the a couple things. I think that mandating things gets people really upset. So mandating students attend the March for Life rally on May 9th. I think it's going to cause some backlash. I don't think that every student's going to agree to that. I think there's going to be a lot of student protests against that mandate. Um, and then the second is mandating learning about about the topic may also cause backlash. Yeah, and this has come from someone who I think I actually do think more education is necessary on the topic of abortion. I do. I, I truly do believe that. I I think I think we as we the collective as a society have not done enough education and awareness building, particularly to young people, about abortion, about the options, um, about the mental, physical, emotional health impacts that that decision has. I think that more needs to be done there. I think this is something both pro-life and pro-choice groups um, sometimes actually agree on, that more education awareness is necessary in schools, also for our physicians, for our uh, uh, nurses, for, for nurse practic practitioners, just so that more people are aware of everything when it comes to abortion. But interestingly enough, the tactics that this trustee is taking when it comes to uh, the March for Life and uh, flying the pro-life flags are eerily similar to what I've seen not only from race uh, anti-racism committees, you know, mandating learning, mandating um, attendance at things, Again, that has a very visceral a visceral response by people. It's either like you're with us or you're against us kind of thing. And I don't think that's beneficial to the public dialogue and discourse on the topic of abortion. I do think that, again, more information is necessary, but I don't think mandating it actually does anything. Uh, sorry, I think it actually undoes a lot of the good that people want to do. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Jonathan Haidt has talked about in his book, um, geez, there's so many, but there's one book, oh, The ha Happiness Hypothesis, where Jonathan Haidt says, you know, you can mandate everyone take an ethics course, and it doesn't make the person more ethical. Their behavior may not be eth more ethical. Uh, you can actually mandate financial literacy courses in high school, but it doesn't mean people will make better financial decisions, better financial, however you want to define that, um, later in their life. Um, and the reason why is because, you know, there's not a lot of information retention, but also on top of that, our behavior um, versus what we learn in school are very different. So, you know, it's a psychological intervention, right? Like the idea that you can, um, you know, take a course on uh, abortion and learn about all the options doesn't may not change your, your sexual behavior and your sexual behavior patterns. Uh, just because you take a course on financial literacy doesn't mean you'll change your behavior patterns when it comes to money. There's way more bigger environmental factors that play a role and, and risk, in some cases, um, to these actions. So that's my kind of like critique of the TCDSB's proposal. I don't think mandating students to march uh, in a highly divisive topic is a good idea. I also don't think if they choose not to and mandating uh, education awareness on the topic is also a good idea. I do think that make the information there and make it uh, you know available. And this is the same opinion I have, you know, when it comes to, you know, there are big debates on LGBTQ in the classroom. Like don't mandate kids to march and also don't mandate kids to learn about it. Make the information uh, there for kids to learn about it should they choose. Mandating things again doesn't may not have the impact we want. And again, it runs the risk of having the opposite impact as well. So love to know your thoughts about the TCDSB's um, policies that they've put forward. 
let me know in the comment section below because I just wonder sometimes if what they're trying to do is uh, a good, a net good, or a potential, you know, are they laying the groundwork for a lot of backlash? Let me know in the comment section below.